Antiphospholipid syndrome. Have you heard of it? Not many people have, but it can quickly come up when you Google any autoimmune lab test. Rheumatology antibody testing can get complicated, but testing for antiphospholipid syndrome takes things to a whole new level. But don't worry, I'm going to break it down in a way you can understand and take back to your situation. We'll talk about what antiphospholipid syndrome is, what are the antibodies we use to diagnose this, and when we should be tested. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz, and this is Connect Rheumatology. Let's get started. Antiphospholipid syndrome, or APS, is a collection of signs, symptoms, and lab tests that put someone at a high risk for developing blood clots. APS is an autoimmune condition, and 50% of cases happen by itself, and the other 50% happen alongside other autoimmune conditions, most commonly lupus. Making a diagnosis of APS is just as much art as it is science, and the autoantibodies we check are an important part of the process. The symptoms of APS are primarily related to the symptoms of blood clots, and what's different about the clots in APS is that they can happen in both our veins and our arteries. When we usually hear about people getting blood clots in their legs, for example, the clots are usually in their veins. Getting clots in our arteries tends to indicate something more systemic is happening, and APS is one of the things we need to think about when we find a clot in an artery. Other symptoms of APS include DVTs, which are blood clots in our big veins, a type of rash or skin finding called livido reticularis, strokes, low white blood cells or platelets, or pregnancy loss. When any of the symptoms occur, the doctors have to have a high level of suspicion to go hunting for APS with specific antibody tests. Even if you have lupus, it's not necessarily standard for your doctor to check the APS test unless you have had any of these symptoms. So for example, if a young person without any risk factors develops a stroke, antiphospholipid antibodies will be checked to look for a reason for that stroke. Along the same lines, if a woman loses a pregnancy, especially if it's after 10 weeks or they have had multiple early pregnancy losses, then their doctor may check the APS autoantibodies to look for an explanation. Hi everyone, so I just wanna jump on real quick because I have some late breaking news that I wanted to include in the video. New studies that show that in those who have lupus, who have the presence of an antiphospholipid antibody, they seem to have a higher risk of cardiovascular disease compared to those who just have lupus. And we already know that people with lupus and every other type of autoimmune disease will have a higher cardiovascular risk. So the presence of the antiphospholipid antibody seems to increase that risk even more. And so it gets into that question of, well, when should we be testing and why aren't we doing these tests more regularly or as a standard if you have lupus. Now, later on in the video, I'm gonna talk about how we really just do these tests if someone has a blood clot. And when looking for antiphospholipid syndrome, that's true. But this new information might change whether or not we should do it even without a blood clot. So if you find yourself with lupus and you wanna do everything you can to optimize your cardiovascular health, it might be worthwhile talking to your doctor about getting these tests done, even if you haven't had a clot. So what are these antibodies that we check? Well, there are three different tests we run. Two are looking directly for the autoantibody, and one is a functional test that tells us that the autoantibody is there. Okay, don't worry, I'll explain. So, the two tests that look directly for the autoantibody are the anti-cardiolipin and the anti-beta-2 glycoprotein. The cardiolipin is a protein found in our mitochondria, which is a major structure of our cells. And antibodies to the cardiolipin are seen in those with antiphospholipin lipid syndrome. It's important to remember that none of these antibodies have been proven to cause antiphospholipid syndrome or blood clots, but their presence is required for an official diagnosis as they have been strongly correlated with the condition. The beta-2 glycoprotein is a protein felt to have many functions, including interacting with our immune system and our coagulation system. And when I say coagulation system, I simply mean the collection of proteins and factors that all work together in order to make sure we form a blood clot when we need to and we keep our blood flowing when we need to. Anytime we talk about autoantibodies, we have to remember that they are come in different forms. This is true for every antibody and for the most part, we don't need to worry about it so much when we get testing. It's important for your doctor to understand this and know which form they are testing for when they order the test, but for the most part, you can focus on whether you are positive or negative. Well, 
in the case of these two antibodies, the anti-cardiolipin and the anti-beta-2 glycoprotein, the form is actually important. The most common antibody forms we can test for are the IgA, the IgM, and the IgG. Ig stands for immunoglobulin, which is just a fancy word for antibody. So A, M, and G are the different antibody forms. Well, the anti-cardiolipin and the anti-beta-2 glycoprotein can be found in IgA, IgM, and IgG forms. But the reason I'm even bringing it up is because not all forms are created equal. The forms we worry about for both of these autoantibodies are the IgM and the IgG forms. Those are the forms that are most associated with the actual syndrome and blood clots. IgA isn't. So if you look at your blood test results and you see your anti-cardiolipin or your beta-2 glycoprotein IgA is positive, you most likely don't have anything to worry about, but you should still talk to your doc, of course. The third antibody we test for is called the lupus anticoagulant, which is about the most confusing name you can ask for because one, half of people with APS don't have lupus, and two, in antiphospholipid syndrome, it's a procoagulant, meaning pro-blood clots, not anticoagulant. So, yet again, rheumatology making things unnecessarily confusing. Testing for the lupus anticoagulant gets complicated, and honestly, you don't need to know all the steps. But just know that it's a test that looks for the effect of the autoantibody, not the autoantibody itself. Which is why when you look at your lab result paper, it's a series of words and results and then either in green or red at the bottom will say detected or not detected. It's also why the result of the test can be influenced by certain factors like whether you have recently had a blood clot or if you're on blood thinning medications. So now that we know what the tests are, when should we get tested? Because with AP Yes, the win actually matters. So like I said before, these tests aren't always included in your usual ANA or autoimmune lab panel. I've seen them included in more comprehensive panels, but there is an argument that testing them before you even have an autoimmune diagnosis is a little overkill because without the right symptoms, the presence of these antibodies doesn't mean anything. Remember, we have no proof that they cause disease, just that they are associated. If you've been diagnosed with lupus because 35% of antiphospholipid syndrome is associated with lupus, it's common then to check them. But for conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, Sjogren's or psoriatic arthritis, it's really not standard. We will typically check them if someone has a blood clot, especially in their arteries, someone has had recurrent early miscarriages, meaning earlier than 10 weeks, or they have a late miscarriage, or if someone has had lab signs seen in APS, like having a low white blood cell count or low platelets. Anytime we do any test, we want to know what we're going to do with that information. How will that information change our treatment or our recommendations? The reason we don't usually check these antibodies in someone who has no symptoms or history of clots is because what we do with that information isn't clear. If you have had a clot or lots of pregnancy losses and you have the right antibodies, you may need to be on blood thinners to prevent further clots. Well, as you can imagine, blood thinners are not something to mess around with and we don't want to use them unnecessarily. And by the way, having the right antibodies once isn't enough. Antiphospholipid syndrome is the rare condition where we need to see them positive twice, at least 12 weeks apart. So having them positive once without symptoms means nothing. Having them positive once with symptoms is something, but not enough. Having them positive twice, at least 12 weeks apart with symptoms, now you have enough to start talking about blood thinners. So what does all of this mean for you and your results? The first question to ask yourself, have you had any blood clots or pregnancy losses in the past? This can be a blood clot in the leg, the lungs, the brain, or anywhere else. Was there a reasonable reason to have that blood clot? So for example, getting a blood clot in the leg after a long plane ride can happen and wouldn't necessarily mean you have to go on a wild goose chase looking for antiphospholipid for lipid syndrome. Have you had a number of pregnancy losses? Remember, we want to think about early losses at less than 10 weeks or late loss after 10 weeks. Remember, we want to think about early losses at less than 10 weeks or late losses after those 10 weeks. If you've gotten these tested, which 
form of the anti-cardiolipin and beta-2 glycoprotein were positive? Was it the IgG or IgM, or was it the IgA? Although some test panels won't even do the IgA, many do, so it requires us to be diligent and aware that the IgA form doesn't really mean anything. And then finally, have you gotten these tests done just once? or have you had them done at least twice 12 weeks apart? We still have a lot to learn about antiphospholipid syndrome, as I'm sure you can see. The fact that we have to wait for a clot to appear in order to even start down the investigation road shows we don't have great markers that are good at predicting this condition. Because obviously what we want is a marker that can predict clotting so that we can prevent it, which now we don't really have. I hope you found this helpful. Antiphospholipid antibodies are confirmed confusing, even to doctors, which is why you may say, see them checked but never mentioned by your doctor because they're hard to explain. And if you want to learn about the new treatment all rheumatologists are getting excited about, check out the video on CAR-T therapy next. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.